O M to the G. We are back with the Gorilla Collective Three Point Fizzive. If you were here for Black Voice and Gaming or Gorilla Collective Three, thanks for tuning in, supporting the devs and the squad, and welcome back. I am your host Justin Woodward, co-founder of the Mix, the Media Indie Exchange, and I am with my good and friend and partner from <laughs> Wilmer Sound, who hasn't been around, Alex Wilmer. Yes, it is great to be with you, my good and friend. Just be the live vibes. <laughs> we're we're going to be making some magic pop off and happen. Uh, a bit of history about the Gorilla Collective. This is the third year of the Gorilla Collective, and it was organized by the mix and other publishing partners and friends during the mask flopping, booster shot stabbing shutdown of 2020 to support the game development culture from the vultures and put something together since we can no longer give each other hugs at events. Oh my God. I love, I love the love, you know what I mean? We are developers and enthusiasts supporting other folks in this space and are honored to be here again. Before we get started, we have to give a huge shout out to our illustrious sponsors, PlayStation, Razer, Astro Gaming, Tencent, as well as our fellow devs and publishers. You see them up here, they're, they're here, all their glory, amazing. Also, salute to the developers who participated in the showcase. They have all contributed their time, blood, sweat, and tears, and resources to make this thing possible. We are just messengers showcasing awesome content. So shout out to our broadcasting partners who are helping us with this content and supporting the showcase. Twitch, Steam, IGN, and of course GameSpot. You guys are amazing. Yes, and the love continues, so be sure to check out the Gorilla Collective event page on steam where you can learn more about the games buy the games that are available now and add the games that are not available to your wish lists that's really important that helps out the developers so definitely add those games to the wish lists and yes. buy them on all the platforms possible switch steam. <laughs> make sure to get them on every platform. yeah every all of them you know <laughs> that would really help out the developers <laughs> that'd sure. be very friendly <laughs> We are coming at you with a barrage of dope indie titles first, starting with some interesting GC picks, and we'll end our showcase with a glimpse of some titles coming from Japan with a spotlight from our friends at BitSummit. Yes. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> Blind. And I'm Roman. At Ironlands, we are big fans of cyberpunk fiction and games. But we have our own ideas of what a cyberpunk world can be. We're making a bright, vibrant world where you live your cyberpunk slice of life. Run your business, meet new people, make friends and enemies. This is a game in which you manage your restaurant, bar or nightclub, take care of your staff, make deals, farm and experience the stories of the people you meet. Or maybe you just want to take the day off and go fishing at the docks instead. Nivalis primarily uses voxel art for the environments. We spend lots of time creating a unique atmosphere with high levels of detail and dynamic elements. But although we're filling the world with interesting things to see and do, we're even more excited by your creativity. You'll customize your apartment, your restaurants, bars and nightclubs, and make choices that will change the lives of the people around you. There's something very emotional about a cyberpunk setting, with its dystopian but yet very colorful and inviting world. I think the most engaging thing to me personally about Nivalis is that it's a world that never stops or sleeps. 
there is always something happening around you. The world is filled with dozens of details that make it feel alive and real. We can't wait to see the choices you'll make and how you'll choose to live your life when you come visit us in Nivalis. Hey boss, time to wake up. We got customers waiting. What do you mean you don't know where to start? Let's clean this place up, move some chairs and tables around. We can make this place shine again. If the weather gets bad, we can grow some veg in the greenhouse. Once we start making real money, well, then you can rent that fancy new apartment in Midtown. So make friends, make enemies. If customers are rude, just turn on the old charm. Or <laughs> water down their drinks. I'm not your conscience. <laughs> this is a world to explore, to make stories. Your stories. You ever look up at the clouds and wonder what's up there? Well, if you dream big enough, maybe you'll find out. Maybe we all will. Welcome to Nivalis. We are very happy to share with you our upcoming adventure game, Lost in Play. We wanted to create a game that will recapture the spirit of play from our childhood and look and feel like you are playing a cartoon. <laughs> Lost in Play is a feel-good adventure. Play as Toto and Gal to explore dreamscapes and befriend magical creatures. On this journey, they tackle difficult situations that only together they can get out of, using their wits and courage. <laughs> We created over 30 different unique and challenging mini-games. We wanted to create an evolution of the classic point-and-click adventure games we used to play when we were kids, by making the gameplay much more fluid and natural for modern-day consoles. Making the game feel at home both with the gamepad as well as with a mouse. Having young kids of our own, we aim to create a game you can play with your entire family, where adults and children can enjoy playing together. Alon Zilon! Fluri Oymak! Fluri Oymak! Fluri Oychak! We chose to have all the dialogues in gibberish in order to concentrate on visual storytelling and because it's fun. Hey. Allow yourself to get lost in your imagination. Hey. Allow yourself to get lost in play. Lost in Play will be available for Nintendo Switch and PC this summer. to the internet world of Glitchbusters. The world of Glitchbusters is currently under attack by mysterious viruses known as glitches. Together with your friends, you will play Glitchbusters in a four-player, co-op, third-person shooter action game. Your goal is to defeat viruses and glitches, including trolls like you can see here, on your way to discover the secret behind the virus outbreak and the glitches themselves. During your adventures, sometimes you'll run into certain objects that are out of your reach 
In cases like these, you'll want to take advantage of the magnetic co-op system that defines Glitchbusters. You can stack on top of your allies and reach high locations. By stacking on top of each other here, we can find the switch that allows us to move forward. As you move through Glitchbusters, you'll need to think about creative ways to defeat large groups of villains at once. Take advantage of your surroundings. Work together for the best results. Use the magnetic qual system to climb on top of walls, pipes, as well as to climb on top of your allies. Once you reach a high location, not only can you shoot the enemy, you can also drop down on them in order to destroy them. Here we see the UFO elevator. Use this to reach high locations to find the path forward. Sometimes, even when you intend to cooperate together, you can get into each other's way. You'll also find other AI as you move through the world of Glitchbusters. You'll have other game modes, including this side-scrolling mode here. You'll need to be careful that your allies aren't trying to keep you from collecting the most likes while being sure to dodge obstacles as they come towards you. As you run into other Kree tubers, listen to what they have to say. They may give you important hints to help you discover exactly what is occurring in the city and elsewhere, causing this viral outbreak. Most of the living creatures within the world of Glitchbusters are based on emoji. You as the player will also have the opportunity to customize your character with different emoji faces. Our main goal is to have a game that has players talking amongst themselves and bringing back the feeling of couch co-op that defined many of our childhoods. As a member of the Rescue Squad, one of your jobs is to collect as many likes as you can. The player who collects the most likes will have the best chance of becoming the MVP at the end of the level. Of course, if you want to keep all the likes to yourself, you can also play this game entirely solo or with only two or three people. Glitchbusters will feature four-player split-screen and local multiplayer as well, so you don't necessarily have to be on the internet to play. Sometimes you'll need to use these special USB keys in order to proceed through the level. Glitchbusters may be a cooperative action game, but every once in a while, it may be in your best interest, or you may simply just be in the mood to throw your allies under the bus. Once you've freed up Cloudy, the manager of the servers here, that will be the end of the stage and you'll be able to proceed to the next one. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to pick up Glitchbusters later on this year. Try that again.
Wow, Navalis is oozing with that cyberpunk style. It looks so clean, the lighting uh, and the 3D graphs, dope. The block is looking real fresh and crispy too. We're gonna take a little bit of an intermission because we have an announcement to make. The team at The Mix is celebrating our 10th year anniversary and it has been quite a ride. Putting together showcase broadcasts like this one and in-person events all over the world has been incredible. When I helped to start The Mix, I was a budding developer and entrepreneur grinding alongside my indie friends looking to get our teams just a little bit of shine and recognition. Our mission from day one was to blow up amazing indie titles and have the talented folks behind them get some love. We have had the honor of working with some of the best teams, publishers, and partners in the business and are proud to keep that tradition going and flowing through our evolving vision. With this in mind, we are proud to announce The Mixed Games, where we will be further partnering with developers and our publishing friends to develop, publish, and create inclusive opportunities for developers to grow. We will rock this out by delivering full multi-platform experiences through development, financial support, manufacturing, distribution, and marketing help. This is an exciting opportunity we will be teasing now and we'll have more info later. Let's get back to the show. Up next, our second stack of games where we'll be sharing an up and coming title from the Humble Games family and get Foxy with an update from a slick animal based adventure on its release horizon. Let's roll. of Ravage, combat is at the heart of the game. You'll have to face powerful champions from different rounds. Don't expect to defeat them in a single fight. There are a lot of ways to approach the combat. You can try to create a carry for your squad, sacrificing other units to do so. You can focus on damage over time. You can use global abilities called edicts. You can weaken enemies and send your powerful leader to finish them. Or you could come up with more creative combinations, utilizing the mechanics of individual skills. Each of your units has its role, be it support, tank or damage dealer. But the way in which it fulfills its role is also important. Different tanks, for example, can control damage in different ways. Some can reduce the damage an enemy does while others can resurrect during battle, making any health bonus more potent. You can make any combination that fits your playstyle, and become one of the Lords of Ravage. I'm Eli, the developer of Wanderlost, and today we're going to be taking a quick look at some gameplay. 
Wanderlust is a, a survival RPG set in an unusually cheerful post-apocalypse. So you can see here I'm, I'm putting the final touches on my base. I'm using a stone floor because wood can actually catch on fire, and if I want to place a fire pit down so that I can cook inside my base, stone is going to keep me pretty safe. I'm going to place a window here as well so that I can keep an eye on any zombies going by, especially once I get a roof put in. That'll, that'll keep me a little bit safer. Roofs are, are what keep the weather off your back, so that can be important. My hunger meter's not doing that great, and I don't have much food stored, so I am going to go and place a couple traps down. There are a lot of different ways to get food in Wanderlust. Placing small traps to catch game like rabbits and squirrels can be really effective if you have the time to wait for them. Another really good way to get food is to go fishing if you've got the supplies. Uh, and I do have the supplies. I actually keep a separate bag containing my fishing supplies, which you saw me switch there. I can just toss a new backpack on in order to switch between different loadouts. So now I've got my fishing backpack on. And you can see those bubbles are where any fish are. That was actually a big part of why I built this base where I did because it had easy access to a good fishing location nearby. Casting into the deep water because that's where the larger fish are found. It took me a couple casts, but I did get a good spot with the fish and we have caught a mackerel. So now, now that I have the fish, I do need to cook it. I also need to debone the fish. So cooking and fire making in Wanderlust is uh, important for a variety of reasons. Fires are going to keep you warm. Weather is a, a significant challenge in the game, depending on which biome you build in. And, uh, and I actually built in the boreal forest biome, which is an especially cold one. So you can see I'm starting a fire right now using a lighter. Uh, a lighter is actually one of the easiest tools. They're kind of rare, but you can find them from zombies and in loot. Fire makers don't last forever, so if you have one, uh, it will run out. But you can always craft more if there are primitive tools like hand drills and bow drills. Now I'm just going to cook this fish up. Once I eat this, that's going to improve my health regeneration and it's going to give me a health boost that lasts for maybe about a, an hour or so in game. And with hunger taken care of, we can focus on other things like expanding our base, exploring some of the abandoned towns and fighting the zombies that reside there, leveling up, and even completing quests for our friends over in Halcyon. Thanks for joining me to take a look at Wanderlust. Guess we're taking the ghost out of ghost town, huh kid? I've always wanted to visit New Orleans, but not like this. Nice one! That's not my home. That's my hell. A minor chord, just for you.
Get ready for the new and awesome edition of Kung Fury Street Rage. A day at the beach. What could possibly be more epic than a true hero? Another hero. Double trouble. Enjoy the breathtaking multiplayer as player two joins the fight. Yeah, two. Because teamwork makes the dream work. Play as Hasselhoff, the world's most iconic lifeguard, steps in with his singing prowess and... Oh, that's some nice chest hair, sir. More action, more awesome. This game just has more. Choose your stage. Punch Nazis in the sewers, on the beach, in the Viking Age. Hell, punch Nazis everywhere, all the time. Kung Fury Street Rage. Soon available on a platform near you. Rated M for Mature. Wow, shout out to Humble Games for Coral Island. That is an exquisite game. Looks so good. Chef's kisses all around for sure. Shout out to Neon Doctor for holding it down. Make sure to wishlist all of those games, of course, and pick up my lovely wife when it is ready and available. For our last segment, we are going to blast through some more games, starting with an update from a deductive wizard simulator. 
check out some new takes on the strategy genre, and then catch up with games from our friends at BitSummit with their anticipated GC 3.5 indie picks. Oh yeah, let's go. Hello there, and welcome to EVO. As your mayor, let me be the first to say, this is a safe place to- <sighs> Another mayor dead. They don't last very long around here. This used to be a quiet, peaceful place. Times have changed. These days, no one is safe. Not even in their own homes. And the conspirators are to blame. They lurk in the shadows and strike when nobody's watching. However, all hope is not lost. Each one of you possesses remarkable skills that will aid in your quest for justice. Special abilities that not only help you uncover the conspirators, but also prove your innocence. You will have to trap, spy, and even kill to help ensure your survival. For some of you, why be so lucky? Fear not, because even in the afterlife, you can aid your fellow villagers. You must work together and find the conspirators hiding in plain sight. With the information you've gathered, cast your vote to eliminate the Reekers of Havoc and restore order to evil. That's unless you're one of them. Greetings, your majesty, and welcome to the unforgiving world of orcs. In orcs, your primary goal is to protect your kingdom against the hordes of ruthless orcs. If your main castle falls, it means the kingdom is lost. If you manage to defeat every wave of orcs, it means you live to fight another day. You will have some troops of your own, but you can't rely on them to defeat the orcs. You will always be outnumbered. So the only reliable way to get rid of them is to build some more castles! To build something, you need to pick a card from your hand and place it on a map. Be strategic about it. You should always consider from which direction the orcs are planning to attack this time. 
A castle consists of several parts, so you would need more than one card to complete it. Build it as large as you want! A finished castle can be upgraded with rooms, additional towers, and special buildings to make it shoot faster, deal more damage, or even get a new type of attack. The more castles you have, the more chances for you to repel the next wave of enemies. There are some mysterious structures on the map. Those are the vaults. If you complete its quest, it may reward you with some new cards you can add to your deck. Deck building is an essential part of Orcs. You'll get the chance to upgrade certain cards, slowly creating a perfect deck that will suit your playstyle. Two campaigns won't ever feel the same, thanks to the roguelike nature of the game. If you fail, you can always try again, but this time with new cards in the starting deck. Or you can try out one of the other factions, each with a unique playstyle. So good luck to you, your majesty. I would wish you a long reign, but let's keep it real. I can already hear the orcs approaching. Hey there, my name is Thomas Waterzui and I'm the developer of Please Touch the Artwork. What would happen if you did touch the artwork? That's the question I wanted to explore in this game. This resulted in three unique narrative puzzle experiences, all inspired by art movement, the style, and more specifically paintings from Pete Mondrian. Make no mistake thinking this is a serious game that explains every detail of the art of Mondrian. It's more about the enjoyment of the visuals, the music, and the stories behind the paintings, together with a little bit of cozy puzzling. It uses modern art to tell modern stories, both anecdotal, fictitious, and autobiographical. Both quirky, light-hearted, and bittersweet. Game number one. Tells you about the creation of abstract art using a story inspired on the Genesis story from the Bible. Instead of creating the earth, we'll be creating the canvas and primary color. You'll have to add colors and lines to the canvas to reproduce the painting on the left. Let me quickly fast forward so you can see some more of the levels. By the way, all content is procedurally generated. Game number two. Tells the story of Boogie and Woogie. Two squares who just want to be together, but a rapidly growing world is making this harder and harder. You'll have to help Woogie reach Boogie by figuring out how the obstacles influence Woogie's path. It's actually a modern Romeo and Juliet adaptation that addresses racial inequality. You choose an entrance and Woogie automatically moves forward. The color blocks will then change Woogie's direction. Game number three. It's a visual poem about moving to the big city, full of excitement and high hopes, only to be overwhelmed with mixed emotions. From joy and excitement to feeling homesick and missing your friends and family. Please Touch the Artwork is all about relaxing. There's no time pressure, no skills required, you can play in short sessions. The game doesn't punish you, but engages you to try out stuff to progress, by trial and error. Which is a metaphor for the creative process. The game won Best Art at Tokyo Game Show, Most Impact at Brazilian Indie Developer Game Conference, and was featured by Eurogamer and news outlet The Guardian in the top 20 games from 2022 so far. It's also nominated as a finalist for the Apple Design Awards. So I'm very grateful for that and I hope it might convince some of you to buy and play it. Oh yes indeed, it's already available now on Steam, Apple App Store and Google Play and it will be released on Switch early this summer. as well, but don't tell him.
We're back. Much gratitude to John Davis and the Bit Summit team for sharing their picks for GC3. Yes, I cannot wait to go back to Bit Summit. I can't wait to go back to Kyoto. It's been too long. That concludes the Gorilla Collective 3.5. Thanks once again to our sponsors and broadcasting partners for their support. PlayStation, Razer, Astro Gaming, and Tencent. Thank you also so much Twitch, GameSpot, Valve, and IGN for hosting the stream. Yeah, and be sure to check out the Gorilla Collective event page on Steam where you can learn more about these games, buy the games that are available now, or add the games that are not available to your wish lists. Yes, definitely do that. Thanks to the scrappy and illustrious mix team, Media One, and of course, Wilmer Sound, my amazing co-host. Thank you so oh, much. It's been oh. so long. <laughs> it has. Thank you, Justin. Yes. And uh, where can we find you and the team? Yes, yeah, so you can find us on Instagram at Wilmer Sound or on Twitter at Real Wilmer Sound. Definitely check out Wilmer Sound. Um, also, once again, my name is Justin Woodward, co founder of The Mix. You can follow Gorilla Collective on Twitter at Gorilla Collect, everywhere else at Gorilla Collective, and The Mix on Twitter at Indie Exchange, and everywhere else at Media Indie Exchange. Thank you so much for joining us. This concludes Gorilla Collective 3.5 and 3. We will see you really soon. Peace. Peace.